Welcome back to the History Fix. Last time we talked about the first of those great cultural transformations, uh, which are fundamental really to the way in which we have developed um, over time as a species in our relationship to the environment. And that was the agricultural revolution. And I ended by saying that one of the consequences of the agricultural revolution is that you begin to get the creation of a surplus and that surplus is linked to the second great cultural transformation, which is the emergence of social classes and the way in which our world is divided into haves and have-nots. And that's really becoming established, I suppose, in some parts of the world, around about 5,000 years ago. We're going to focus on that um, today. And I think it's worth making that contrast initially between how things worked in the early phases of the agricultural revolution, so the early agricultural period, where really you didn't have much in the way of social differentiation at all, as far as we can judge from the archaeological evidence. You had lots of communities um, of uh, farmers, probably relatively small communities. There was a lot of land um, available. Um, there was a, a high level of equality within those communities um, between uh, everybody in the community. I mean, equality between men and women, not just equality between men um, and men. And Marx and Engels, the sort of great uh, founders of Marxism, when they sort of talked about this period, they coined this expression, primitive communism. And there was a primitive uh, situation where everybody is more or less equal. And when there was pressure, maybe pressure of population on the available resources, there was lots of virgin land. So probably what would happen is uh, a group would go off and they would clear the land and they would set up a new settlement. So early, the early agricultural world was a very egalitarian world. And then if you come, uh, you come forward in time, um, let's, let, let, let's come forward a good way in time to about 3000, uh, year, 3000 BC and you look at what is happening in, say, um, Iraq or Mesopotamia, as it used to be called, um, what's happening in Egypt, what's happening in the Indus Valley of what is now Pakistan, uh, what was happening in the Yellow River Valley of uh, what is now northern China. There are certain areas where we can see around about 3000 BC, 2500 BC, we can see that something very, very significant is happening, which is quite different from what Marx and Engels called primitive communism. We can see there are urban settlements. We can see that great monuments are being constructed, great temples. Um, we see uh, great tombs, presumably to very important people, often filled with rich grave goods and so on. It's pretty clear that we are now looking at a world where there is a high degree of social differentiation, social difference. Some people have a lot of wealth and presumably a lot of power and other people do not. Now, what's caused this transition to happen between the early period of the agricultural revolution and then later stages in the development of this new agricultural society. I think a crucial thing for us to get a handle on if we want to understand this period or this transition which is taking place is that although there's a surplus being generated because agriculture is more productive than just hunting and gathering, there's a surplus, there's still not that much there is still relative scarcity. There is still relative shortage. There is certainly the worry all the time that things could go badly wrong. There could be a drought. Uh, there could be crop blight. Um, there could be uh, an inundation. There could be flooding. All kinds of things could happen, which could cause this relatively small surplus to turn out not to be enough. And then the community is under great pressure. People are starving and so on. And it's a world where those potential shortages 
are being dealt with by different communities that are to a degree divided from each other. So one way in which a community that's facing resource pressure could deal with that would be by attacking another community, organizing itself into an armed force and attacking another community and taking by plunder the resources that, 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 that it needs. So this is a world of tension, a world of potential shortage, a world of relative scarcity and therefore a world of tension between different communities where different communities are beginning to organize themselves potentially to go to war with each other. Now in those situations um, if you've got a surplus and you're a well-organized community and you have those anxieties you begin to invest some of your resources in creating specialists who have the job of managing the community and defending the community against potential um, aggressors. You have the resources to invest in, for example, creating military um, equipment so that you can defend yourself against those who might threaten you. You have resources as well that you might invest in uh, the placating of the gods that you imagine in some sense are responsible for whether or not your uh, herds and flocks are going to flourish, whether your crops are going to grow, whether you're going to be successful if you have to go to war with another community. And the people who preside over those processes of political management, of organizing warfare, of placating uh, the gods, they become special people in the community surplus is given to them to enable them to carry out their functions as rulers, as uh, war leaders, as priests, and sometimes, interestingly, in very early forms of class society, these different roles um, are rolled together. So you have the priest king, who is both responsible for ritual, religious ritual, and also responsible for leading people to war when necessary. Surplus is being used by a class of people who are beginning to emerge out of the mass and differentiate themselves from the mass. It doesn't take very long before those people get a sense that they have wealth, they have power, they have a difference, a different interest from the mass of the community, they have a position of relative privilege that it's in their interest to protect and they can begin to use the fact that they control some of the surplus in order to shore up their own position in society. And a community which has, at one period in history, uh, willingly provided resources to enable some people to become specialists, discovers that, that those people have emerged as a class who are now insisting that they be maintained in that position indefinitely and who are willing to use the wealth and power that they have acquired to ensure that that continues to be the, uh, the case. As soon as that happens we have a ruling class able to maintain its power by virtue of the fact that it controls a big chunk of society's surplus wealth and is prepared to use that control over wealth to hold down the mass of the population to insist that the mass of the population continues to provide the resources uh, that are necessary to maintain the elite and its various activities. That's a process of exploitation. And fundamentally what class is about is a process of exploitation where the mass of the people who are creating the wealth of society have a proportion of that being creamed off in the form of taxes, in the form of rents, or however it's form of profit, in the form of interest, or however it's done later in the development of class society, part of the wealth that they are creating through their own work is being creamed off to support a ruling class whose position now cannot be effectively challenged uh, by those at the base of society. This is an absolutely fundamental transformation in human uh, social uh, experience, the emergence of a ruling class, the emergence therefore of a subject class that finds that it is being uh, exploited, and also as part and parcel of this, 
another very interesting change, crucially important for uh, the way in which our species develops. Not only do you have exploitation, the exploitation of working people economically at the point of production, what you also have is new forms of, a, of oppression emerging, very much bound up with the development of this class society, including, crucially, the oppression of women. And I'm going to talk next time about how the oppression of women and patriarchy also emerges at the same time as the development of a class society and a ruling elite. We are facing the greatest crisis in the history of humanity. Capitalism is driving us towards climate catastrophe. To understand how we got here and how we get out of it, we really need to understand human history. What we're trying to do here at The History Fix is to give us the understanding of the past that we need to equip us to fight for a better future. If you like what we're doing, please share and subscribe and also contribute to our Patreon page. Thanks very much.